there are three methods to separate a mixed cost into its fixed and variable components the high low method, scatter graph method, and regression analysis. When we do that, we end up with a cost function. We want the cost function because we want to be able to predict costs at different levels of activity. We're going to start with the high low method. Step one is to determine the independent variable. We already know that the number of transfers is the cost driver, the independent variable. So we're going to move forward with that. Step two, determine the highest and lowest independent variable. So looking through the months, January through to September, we're going to look for the very highest amount and the very lowest amount. We can see that the very highest amount is in May, 750. The very lowest amount happens to be April 199. Note that the high and low points are always chosen using the cost driver, the independent variable. Step 3. Take the related dependent variable. We know that the dependent variable is total handling costs. This is where students often get it wrong. They find the highest and lowest points for the dependent variable also. The highest and lowest points for the dependent variable would be January, 8,140, and August, 18,426, but that would be incredibly wrong. Instead, once we have the high and low points for the independent variable, we simply take the dependent variable from those same points. So I'm going to take April's total handling cost and I'm going to take May's total handling cost. We don't care if there are higher or lower dependent variables. For instance, we already saw January and August. We simply use the total handling costs from the high and low number of transfers. Step four, calculate the variable rate per unit using the information obtained. What is the formula? The formula is variable rate is equal to the high point in dollars minus the low point in dollars divided by the high point in driver minus the low point in driver. CD, by the way, is cost driver. If we use the high and low points that we determined in our formula, it would look like this. The high point is $17,370. Subtract the low point at $8,239. Divide that by the high cost driver, which is 750 transfers, minus the low cost driver, which is 199 transfers. If we do this math, we would see that this is $9,131 divided by 551 transfers, which is equal to $16.57169. The variable cost per transfer is $16.57169. We can round that to two decimal places. Step 5. Calculate the fixed cost using the variable rate that you just calculated in Step 4. How do we do that? We use our cost function. Total cost is equal to variable cost times quantity plus the fixed cost. In order to use this formula, we have to choose to use either the high numbers that we have, which was $17,370 and 750 transfers, or the low numbers, $8,239 and 199 transfers. I'm going to use the high number but you could use either. Now, using the cost formula, substitute in the numbers that you've chosen. I'm choosing the high number. Remember that's 17,370 and 750 transfers. Total cost is equal to the $17,370. The variable cost is equal to the $16.57 that we just calculated and Q, the quantity, is equal to 750 transfers. I'm now going to substitute all those numbers into my formula. 17,370 is equal to 
16.57 times 750 transfers plus fixed costs. Solve for the fixed costs. $17,370 is equal to $12,427.50 plus fixed cost. $17,370 minus $12,427.50 is equal to fixed costs. Fixed costs is equal to $4,942.50. So my cost formula is total cost is equal to 16.57 times the quantity plus $4,943 of fixed costs. Notice that I rounded the fixed costs because this is simply a prediction and not perfect. Good. Now what does this formula actually calculate? It calculates the total cost per month at different levels of activity. How do I know that it calculates total costs per month? Because the data I used is per month, so that's what you get from the formula. What can you do with this formula? Well, we can predict total costs at different levels of activity. Say I want to find out what would be the estimated cost of material handling if we had 700 transfers of materials? Let's go back to our original chart. Notice on our original chart, we never used 700 transfers. I can use our cost formula in order to predict what will be the total handling costs if the number of transfers was 700. Let's calculate it. The estimated total cost of material handling if we had 700 transfers is $16,542. If we actually had 700 transfers, would the total cost be 16542 We actually don't know that. What we know is we can use this formula to predict that it will most likely fall close to $16,542. It won't be $16,542, but it will be close to it so that we can make some kind of predictions at different levels of activity. Can I use this formula to estimate the cost if we had, say, a thousand transfers? Absolutely not. Why not? Because the high low points for the number of transfers is the relevant range within which cost stays constant. High is 750 transfers. Low is 199 transfers. Our cost function only helps us to predict costs within the relevant range. Go outside of our relevant range and we don't know if the cost function will produce a very good estimate, a very good prediction. So remember, outside of the high-low points, we can't use the function to predict costs with any kind of assurance. Why? Because it would be outside of the relevant range. Can we use this function to determine costs, say, in the upcoming quarter, October, November, December? Yes. Yes, we can. Let's see how it's done. Say we believe that in October there will be 620 transfers. And in November, we estimate there will be 690 transfers. And in December, we estimate there will be 735 transfers. Notice that each of these three amounts are within the relevant range. We can use our monthly formula and adjust it to represent a quarter. Total costs for the quarter will be equal to 16.57 multiplied times the quantity 620 plus 690 plus 735 and then add in the fixed costs 4,943 times 3. Total cost for the quarter would be equal to $48,714.65. Note that we didn't multiply the variable cost per transfer by 3. We didn't take the $16.57 and multiply it by 3. That's because the quantity we used already represents 3 months. However, we have to multiply the fixed cost by 3 
because the fixed costs were per month. If we want the fixed costs per quarter, we have to multiply by 3. What if we wanted the total cost for the year? We would then multiply the fixed costs by 12. What are the advantages and disadvantages of the high-low method? Well, I'll cover that in the next video.